Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about yards. What are they? Why are they there? And what do you do at a yard? What does classification and classifying cars mean? And what does a yard track plan look like? I'm going to explain it all. Let's go. Let me first start to explain the different types of yards that exist and why they're there. So here in blue, you see a railroad. It's the blue railroad. And there's several dots along the line which represent villages, cities, towns, and or industries. So the two red dots are division point yards. So why are they there? So here we have a train coming in all the way from the right, following this red line, going to point one. And this train has cars that have to go to the following destinations, as you see in the bottom, Z, 1, A, B, and C. So you see the cars have to go quite far up the line. And if they're coming from three, there's no point to have, let's say, a local train stop at K, J, I, H, G, etc., everything in between. No, the train just goes straight from one division point yard all the way to the next. And at division point yard one, the cars will be shuffled and sorted and they go to the final destination. So as you see, the first three cars have to go to Z, so they'll go a bit up the line. The two red ones will stay at Division Point Yard 1, be spotted somewhere there, perhaps in a local industry. And then the cars A, B, and C will actually move back the line a little bit by perhaps the local and spot them at the designated spots. So I hope that's clear. Let's go to the next one, Interchange. This is when you have two railroads either intersecting each other or in close vicinity of each other. And you want to get cars from one railroad, in this case the blue one, to the other one, the black one. I'll show you several track plans for interchange yards later on. And then we go to the next two. One yard could be a junction yard. This is where you have a branch split off from the main line. So as you see here, and then you can have a branch terminus at a branch. So at the end of the branch, you'll have a small yard to serve that branch and perhaps some big industries at that location, which would be D in this case. So let's zoom in a little bit more at this junction yard to see exactly what happens. So let's say again, we have a train coming in from the east. It comes from this division point yard and goes all the way to this junction yard. The train consists of the cars that you see below. About half of the train, the ones that have to go to B, A, 1, and Z, they're all further down the line. So they will be sorted at two and then added to the appropriate outbounding trains to go to these locations. And then there's another train that goes up the branch line. They will take the cars for C and D. The cars actually have to stay at the junction yard. So then we'll go to the last yard. This is industry support yard. I just drew it in here in F. So this is a yard specifically dedicated and designed to support one industry. So let's look at some other examples to see what's going on because we haven't talked about classification and classifying yet. Let me just get these letters out of the way. So we're going to stay at this junction yard number two. Which trains uh, are going to be arriving there? Well, well, we got trains coming in from the division point yard, both from the east side and the west side. We got a local coming in. It might have originated from two and went up the line and back, or it might have originated from three and goes past all the individual stations to two. And then you have much more. You have a branch line, a transfer runs, perhaps a transfer to this industry support yard. You have hot shots coming in, TOFCs. A whole lot of trains can be expected at two. Let's zoom in a bit and continue this thought. So here we have one train coming in from three again, and it has these cars, and they'll have to go to different destinations. And as we said, there's more trains coming in with more cars that all have to go to other diff different destinations. But inbound trains is only half of the fun. There's also outbound trains. So again, what are these? Well, these are trains going east, west to the division port yards. We have locals going east, west, branch lines, etc., etc. So the cars that came in actually have to be classified or sorted to originate uh, into one of these new trains or to be picked up by one of these trains. This is where classification comes in because the cars here on the left that came in have to be sorted in the manner here on the right. So if we look at the first string of cars, this train will probably go eastbound as it has three red cars for uh, division point yard number three. Then it has two blue ones that it might drop off at number three as well. And they go to J or to K, L, M, N, N, blah, 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 after the line. And it has two cars that's going to drop off here at the interchange yard and so on, so on for the other cars. Let it be noted that these cars are blocked. What does that mean? If the cars are blocked, it means that all the cars for the same destinations are grouped. So the three red ones here are blocked, the two blue ones, and these two class ones. The cars that came in were mostly not blocked. And it is the responsibility of the yard where everything is blocked and sent out that the cars are in the best order to continue their journey all the way to the end point. So now you know everything about the different types of yards and what classification and classifying is and means and why you have to do it in the first place. Let's have a look at some track work. So this is where it gets fun. In order to understand every function of every piece of track, we're going to slowly build it up. So I'm going to start now with the smallest possible station, either freight or passenger. And here it is. Here is a main line and there is nothing. Because back in the old days, a train would even stop at a road crossing to unload certain cars uh, for trucks and people waiting there to pick it up. This can also happen at some dirt patch. 
So let's quickly move on. The next step from that would be a station on the main. Also not too exciting, so let's move on from there. We can add a freight track here to the station, perhaps also to spot a luggage car. If luggage has to be unpacked, it takes more time and the passenger train cannot wait for that. So let's move on from that. We have the luggage track here and then we have a dedicated freight track. So you can have a little freight depot here and this is still the main line going from east to west. So once you have this, you probably want a passing siding, which is this one to your little station slash freight depot. Passenger trains can be here and loading and then passengers get on and off. And then another train can take this siding and run around the waiting train. Very useful. Enough about passenger and little freight depots. Let's get to the yards. First off, interchange. So here we have again the main line, goes from east to west, and here we would have railroad number B. And as small as it is, yes, an interchange can just be a single piece of track. It's not very convenient because if the car is coming in from the west, it has to pick up a few cars. It has to take the cars on the nose end and go all the way up the track until it has a runaround possibility to then run around the cars and stick them through the back of the train. Let's move on from there. So the natural progression, let me zoom out a bit, would be again here, you have your main line, go from east to west. Here's your railroad number two to have a runaround as you see here. One thing to note is that if you wanna use this runaround, you're probably gonna need track and time or some kind of clearance because you need to be on the main line to do the runaround. On to the next step. And not requiring any track and time requirements would be this setup. Railway one will go from here to there. And then railway two will be from here to there, just that there's no confusion. So as you see, there's plenty of space to spot extra cars. You can have ones waiting for railroad one and cars waiting for railroad two, and then you can still do a run around if you have to. So these railroads did not cross each other yet. So how does that work? Well, let's have a look. Here you have railroad number one, here you have railroad number two. The easiest, most basic setup is just with a track going from one to the other. So cars will be spotted here onto the next step because we want a runaround. So here you see on the right, the tracks are crossing each other. And then here would be the tra transfer track where cars can be spotted. Here down below is a little bit different configuration with the uh, turnouts. The top one is more ideal because you don't have to foul this uh, main line when coming in from, from the second railroad. But then again, the second one down below might give some more operational challenges which is fun. So here we go to the next version and you have the two railroads crossing each other and here you can have a very small yard. You can actually have as many tracks as you want. One thing to note of course is that if you want to do a run around on this section, these tracks right here and right here have to be long enough to hold at least one locomotive. So we don't have to foul the main line again. So enough about interchange tracks, now it's time to classify. So here, let's go. This is another example, very minimalist again. Main line, and you have one turnout and one line, and you can actually classify cars right here because you have two tracks where you can switch up and down and stick the cars in the right order as you want. On to the next step. So I basically added more tracks because we want to classify, we want to have a lot of tracks. And then the most important item is right here. You want to always not forget a yard lead. So what is the purpose of a yard lead? Well, this yard lead is this track should be longer than the longest classification track because when you classify cars, you're going to be pulling the whole string of cars out of the classification track and then back it up into another track. And you need space to pull them all out and back them up without disturbing the main line. So that's why you have a yard lead. So once you have a yard lead and some classification tracks, you're probably gonna want an arrival and departure track. So that's the next one that you see here. So the train would come in, for example, from the west and then take these turnouts and go to this arrival and departure track right here. The big idea behind this is that it can pick up and or spot cars all without fouling the main line again. Because these operations can take quite a lot of time and you don't wanna be blocking the main line from other traffic that's coming up and down. And big yards can have several arrival and departure tracks and even separate arrival and departure tracks for different destinations. So one or two for eastbound and two for westbound. But in this situation, if the car is on the, uh, let's say departure track and it wants to head west, it has to go here through this section of track, which is basically also used as a yard lead. So we don't want that because that's gonna disturb the yard works. So then we come to this arrangement where the train that is on here, let's say the departure track, can go through these turnouts and then just head up the line as such. So here the yard lead and the access to the classification storage tracks is undisturbed. So the switcher can continue its work. You do want to keep, however, this turnout and this turnout right here, because if there's a car departing from the classification track, you don't want it to go through the yard lead as well. So it will take these turnouts like this, and then continue on the main line, all without disturbing the yard lead. So technically this turnout here doesn't really have to be there. It's probably gonna be a handy one if, if you're a switcher, a stock, or you need to run around, but it doesn't have to be there. 
So then on to the next configuration, depending on your time area, you're going to want to have a caboose track. And I've seen them uh, drawn here as well. Sometimes they even have a double caboose track. And this track is often also used to run around the lead to the classification tracks. So this is a very nice and handy add-on uh, little track that you want to have. So remember that station that we had earlier? Let's plot that in here. So I just added it for now on the main line and the station would fit in nicely just as such. So in this situation, if this uh, was my layout at home, I would give the following destination to these classification tracks because you can add a hundred tracks, but they do need to have some kind of purpose. So the first track here is your main line. Then the second one here is your arrival departure track. We already talked about that. And then one of the classification tracks I would use for eastbound traffic, one for westbound traffic, one for branch line, one for local industries, and perhaps one for storage and maybe a, an overfill if your yard is full. You also often see that tracks uh, switch destination throughout the day because the branch line might be going out in the morning and then the local industries can be switched and then in the evening the branch line comes back. So then you can use the track for multiple purposes throughout the day. So one thing to look at if you uh, have a larger yard is you probably want to have a compound yard as they call it. So they have switches running at parallel next to each other just to get the most amount of turnouts in the least amount of space. So looking at the next track plan, let me just move to the right a little bit, get this text on here. I added a run around track dedicated to more or less leave uh, empty all the time to run around. So why would you want that? Well, let's say a train just came into this track and it has to be terminated on this location. Well, there's going to be a locomotive. The locomotive is at the end over here. You probably want to let it escape and go to the terminal and not have to wait for the switcher to take all these cars away. Secondly, if you're in the caboose era, there might be a caboose at the end and you want to uh, do exactly the same. You want to get that out of there before anything else. So that's why you're going to want to have a runaround. A very handy piece of track. So now we only talked about this stub end yard. So this is a yard that is only accessible through one direction. A lot of yards in the real world are actually accessible by both directions. So both the east and the west. So that would look something like this. This does take a lot of model railroad real estate, so I would advise to only do this if you absolutely must, or you can do a combination of the two. The first three, four tracks can be entered from both directions, and then you have some stub end tracks for perhaps some storage or classification in a certain direction. So going to the next configuration, let me zoom out a bit because we are getting bigger and bigger and there's more stuff to talk about. So now you probably want an extra siding here for your passenger station. This video is all about yards, so I'm not going to do a full add-on of a passenger terminal, but you can have multiple tracks right here to be a ginormous passenger station if you would want to. So moving on to the next step, let me go back to the left. We're going to add some fancy features. So first off, you're going to want to have a terminal to terminate your locomotives and to originate trains from. So the locomotives need to be serviced. This can be anything from a simple piece of track to a full blown turntable, RIP track, etc. All the bells and whistles onto it. Add a little track here for the locomotives to escape through the yard lead directly into the terminal. And I separated a caboose track here dedicated for caboose storage. And also for the caboose personnel to have some R&R. So now we're slowly coming to the end of the story for today. Real yards can get very, very big. One next step that you can do is to add way more tracks. And then secondly, you can duplicate your yard. So here you have one yard specifically for eastbound traffic and one yard specifically for westbound traffic. And if you're really creative, you can add a hump yard to it and all the bells and whistles. So now before we lose the plot, let's just go through the core components that you really want to have, regardless the size of yard you're going to build. First off, you want to have a yard lead, a very important piece. And then you're going to want to have your classification tracks, because that's why we have a yard in the first place. A dedicated track for arrivals and departures is a very useful thing to have, especially if you have a busy mainline. And you're going to want to have an extra runaround somewhere. I would suggest this one as is a very common location, or you can add a separate track here, but the runaround will be a bit longer and it will take off of one of your tracks. Don't forget a place for your caboose track or perhaps a RIP track. And you need a place somewhere to terminate your engines. So I would suggest a terminal. This can be a track or a full blown yard. If you want to download these track plans, please go to my Patreon page where they are all available, as well as the slides that I explained earlier with the different types of yards. If you have any questions, please leave it down below in the commentary. I hope it was clear and you learned something from this video. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.